become insane. You will start rewatching old other be weather episodes. Like I just watched your fight with Regan again in the yard. Don't do it. You'll go down a rabbit hole. Um, I um, team Rachel, by the way, never Regan. Anyway, um, for many reasons, which I can give you dirt on later. But uh, Sunday, what the hell happened, Rachel? Remind us what happened. Yeah, so I was just saying the Sunday we ended with the mess from the eviction, the craziness that had happened. Tucker was going to go home if he didn't win the HOH, um, the AI, um, t the what is it called? The AI competition yeah, 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 yeah. arena. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. I even have it in my notes right in front of me. I, I literally don't remember what happens on Sundays now because every day is the same day. That's yeah. how Big Brother Immerse I am, that every day is Big Brother's day. Well, so Tucker, so Tucker is went, was going to go home if he didn't win the AI arena. Quinn says he's going after Tucker. We have Quinn. We have Kenny. Kenny goes home. We have all this aftermath where everybody is like, hey, uh, Quinn, we were always going to keep you in the house anyways. Quinn, be our best friend. They have the HOH. Somehow Angela pulls through and wins this HOH. I don't know that anyone is confident how Angela won this HOH. But she did a great job. It was a knockout HOH. We love a good knockout HOH. So for me, a knockout HOH is going to show sides. It's going to show who's working with who. And I think that this is really the week that's going to come to fruition where we're going to have these sides, these people that, which is why this is important because at the end of the week, we're going to have a giant blind side. So you have to look at the beginning of the week. In the knockout competition, who did Angela target? She's targeting Brooklyn and she's targeting Leah working together. She, so these are the things like there you can see like Cam is going after, you know, the Tucker, the Rubina, the Chemo, the t -Core. So you can kind of the see these alliances. Starting this is that Quinn has said to save himself. Well, I didn't plan on using my secret power that people had learned he had, which had basically got him i think half of america pissed and got him put up on that like replacement block um nobody believes that he's probably not going to use it um but he did say he wasn't so when angela wins and becomes hoh i think she's super excited and confident i think now she, she keeps talking about she owes tucker wants to do this for tucker there's like this whole mother tucker thing going on we need to make like mother tucker shirts and apps to send <laughs> people start using the phrase mother tucker um and oh right so we have the angela hoh who um well shortly uh, angela doesn't even have time to make her nominations so we see yeah. on live feeds where angela is talking about her nominations but she knows that quinn is going to use the deep fake so the best part of this whole episode i think was angela's reaction it was like that's not me freaking out. Hey, wait a second, guys. That's not me. Yeah. Um, her acting, her yeah. acting. Yeah. Sure. Her acting. It was amazing. It is, uh, in her own words, um, bad acting for a B-list movie. So yeah. I, I love her acting. I love her reactions. It was no shock to anyone that Quinn is taking over the HOH. He's coming after Tucker. So obviously nominating Tucker immediately. MJ is not really working with him. Obviously wants to go after MJ. The third person, it's like, well, who are we going to put up? And this is where I think a flashback to the live feeds for this week um, really comes in handy because they're talking in the, the room with Quinn and there's Cedric and they have this Pentagon alliance. And they're like, who else is Quinn going to put up? And Quinn has to make a decision. Is he going to put up? one of his people or like what's going to happen well as we all know like cedric decides he thinks it's a good idea to be a pawn yeah and it's just never a good idea to be a pawn never, never a good idea to be a pawn don't never be a pawn it's a big brother rule like there's certain rules of gameplay and it's like never volunteer to be a pawn now tucker's done it and Tucker is, it's still risky for him. I mean, he even realized he was pushing it when he decided to use the veto on himself. Yeah. Uh, finally, like he finally realized, all right, I better chill a little bit. But he had enough confidence because he realizes he is a beast of competitions. That, that, that concept of building your resume and going on the block was one of the dumbest things I ever heard. Stay off the block. It's not building a resume. That's making yourself a target. So Cedric has enough trust 
in the House and in the group, but further in his capabilities to win competitions and potentially beat Tucker or MJ, these other fierce competitors, even Rubina, who we can get into, who's showing is much more of a badass competitor than you think in terms of challenges. Um, Cedric makes the fatal flaw number one that you make in Big Brother, which is being like, I'll be the pawn, I'll go up, and thinking... So oh. Cedric volunteers as to try to get it easier for Quinn. And the thing is, is like, we see this throughout the history of Big Brother. The pawn consistently goes home, especially pre-jury. I don't know how many pawns pre-jury have gone home, but I feel like someone in the chat, someone can let us know how many pawns pre-jury have gone home. But this is like a very dangerous time pre-jury to be volunteering to be a pawn because after jury starts, people's gameplay starts changing, but pre-jury pawns, do typically go home. Now, in general, right. don't be a pawn. It's just not a good idea. So, and we also see those Quinn who has in multiple alliances, but still has this over confidence. Like, doesn't isn't kind of in love with Leah. Does not realize Leah hates him. No one's telling him the truth. No one quite trusts him. Like, he has his, he thinks he's his main allegiance is to maybe like um, T Car and Chemo, but he has this other thing. So he's like, I'm gonna come in and mastermind because I have this power. So Quinn is like pretty sure that everything is going to go his way. And then all of a sudden things started going sideways and you almost see Quinn like go into the shadows, like the same way that like he can't vote and he can't control anything in the end. You see Quinn go from being like the star, he's going to mastermind everything. This is Quinn's week to be like that snake he said he's going to do and pull all the strings. And then you see everything but that happened. And it's glorious. It's like well, I think what happened was, ever. too, that Quinn was, like, really... Tucker, I think at this point, is, like, telling Quinn he's coming after him. Quinn's going after Tucker. So they know there's going to be this big veto competition that they're going to go head-to-head -head on, right? So, like, Quinn does think this will all go his way. But until he knows on Saturday, because their nominations are on Friday... Saturday is when they're playing the veto. He knows on Saturday that he's going to have to go in a veto competition against Tucker. So Quinn is thinking, yes, there's a great chance that I am going to win, that he's not going to win. But I think just in general, throwing Tucker up there to play the veto and not trying to backdoor him. Listen, with three nominees, it's hard to do a backdoor. There's three competitions this season. It's going to be way harder to do a backdoor because no matter what, someone is going to always play in this AI arena. So putting Quinn up, or sorry, putting up Tucker and giving him the chance to play in a veto is the best odds for Quinn anyways. So he goes into the veto. We see in the veto that, like, Tucker just beasts this veto. It's insane. And, like... I think that Quinn at this point, his strategy is to like get Tucker to not use the veto. When has that strategy ever worked with anyone? It has never yeah, worked. He's used it on other people. So I think he thinks Tucker is like such a wild card that Tucker may do something so crazy like to either not use it or maybe give it away. So like, why not give it a whirl since Tucker has, you know, usually you save yourself or if you know you have some sort of deal, you don't, but Tucker's on such risky shit that it's like, might as well just throw it out there and see. Uh, and we see that doesn't work. And then we get what, you know, what, who was then, who was up as a replacement? You guys remind me because my brain is all fried. Tucker saved himself. Yeah, he's going to put, so this is another flashback time. So we have to remember that this showman's business is constantly happening in Big Brother. Every single season, we have some couple, some group, pair, whatever that happens. So, uh, Tubina, as their ship name is, everyone's calling them Tubina. And by the way, everyone in the chat, everyone online says they love Tucker. Tucker all day. 100% agree. He is my absolute favorite. I think in this whole podcast, he's our favorite one. We love to talk about him. Um, but so in this like shipping, uh, Tucker and Rubina are in this like, is it a showmance? Is it not a showmance? So Quinn sees them as a pair. 
So Quinn is going to put them up as a pair. He, Tucker knows this is gonna happen. Tucker's thinking, that's why I think Tucker's thinking about not using the veto. Does he wanna right. save Rubina? Does he want to make sure that Rubina, you know, has the best chance? But at the end of the day, Tucker even tells us, look, I'm here to win $750,000. I'm not here to let someone else win Big Brother. Like, I'm here for Big Brother, which is, as fans, exactly what we want to hear. So the veto nominee, this veto nomination ceremony happens. And again, I think it's hilarious that Angela's like, you know, body double pops up. I want to know, okay, so this is like, I'm assuming a hologram. Like, I just want to know, my question is, how does this thing work? Because did he tell like did he tell the diary room like hey this is who i want to nominate and then like they project that as if angela's talking it's deep fake so but is it like a video it's, it's probably a video role so there, there's enough video of you right now rachel yeah to make you say yeah. whatever the hell people have wanted in a big brother yard where you were um it's harder to pull people out of the context where they were so that's why they're like on a white background but they basically there's, there's one or two ways they could have done it. They could just have it from enough stuff collected on them, but they also probably had them stand there and talk because if you train yeah. an AI thing, like I've had to do it for a few different editing tools. I've had to train my voice and I've had to train it on me in case I want to make an edit that's like Franken edited of like my own thing. Like let's say this podcast, I wanted to edit out me not remembering what the hell happened on Sunday. I could because I've made a, a dupe of myself in an editing tool. So what they probably did was have them stand instead of just like sitting in this speak um, and they have enough of them where now they can manipulate their voice and their movements and have them say anything. The um, thing is to me, it doesn't look very good. Like I get what they're trying to do, but if they were actually trying to dupe the house on this, like say everyone didn't know Quinn had it, in my opinion, it doesn't look real. Her lips aren't matching what she's saying. Why all of a sudden would she be on the screen? Like, right. I don't think anyone would be buying this, even if people didn't know. But I think the well, point they, is, if they, they didn't... It, every HOH had been doing a nom as a hologram or as a thing. But if every HOH yes. shows up and does a nomination as a regular person, and then suddenly there's a hologram, you're like, even if, even if you didn't know about this Quinn thing, let's say it never got out, you'd be like, Okay, what the hell is this? Like, yeah, but the, yeah. I feel like they wouldn't... Do you think it was Ainsley or something? You know? But you, it wouldn't matter because I don't think that's the point of it. The point of it isn't, like, how good or how bad the hologram is. The point of it, if if nobody knew it was Quinn, it would have been amazing because they would have inter it would have interrupted their HOH ceremony. And while yeah. she's pulling her little things or they're sitting around instead of pulling the thing, he's she would have popped up on the hologram and said, I'm taking over and nobody would have had any idea it was Quinn. So I think like when they created this idea, they thought they weren't, nobody was gonna tell. Why would you tell that you have this magical power? Like it was a bad idea for Quinn to tell. Future Big Brother players, don't tell, period. I know it's hard to keep a secret. Don't tell. It ruins the- And Rachel, you're yeah. correct. It's not about the quality of it. Right. And even if they did realize like, oh my God, this is some sort of deep fake and different, they wouldn't have known who did it or who's yeah. behind it. So that would have been really fun for them to yeah. try to investigate like, who's the who's the real Angela while you know she's having a meltdown saying it's not me it's not me it's like well then who is it who would make these noms and you can make much wilder nominations when no one knows at you so it was a very good idea but it kind of it just failed because the cat was out of the bag that it was Quinn yeah. exactly but then that it didn't fail because it gave us I think one of the best weeks ever in Big Big Brother like where things have been kind of, people have been playing it safe. Everyone's been talking about not wanting to get their hands dirty, not wanting to start a, you know, start anything, except for Tucker, who doesn't give a shit, and Angela, who's wild, so she's uncontrollable. Most of the house has been playing it pretty safe, staying in alliances. Yeah, Quinn's dirty and has different alliances too, but he's been like quieter about it, but just telling us his plans. So you don't, you, it's been kind of, okay, Kenny's gone. All right, we we know the deep fake is Angela. Something exciting has to happen this week. Well, we I think like week Angela. four, they usually have a really exciting week because people are kind of into the groove of the game. There's more alliances have are having like splits 
And then with that, with also with our knockout competition, that's gonna just start a week off crazy. Knockout competitions are the best competitions to show who is playing on what game, what side. So uh, in the chat, so B said, um, they should have crossed out the wall. So you know like on the wall where it says like who's nominated or whatever, do you think that they should have like grayed out the whole wall so that that way they could have like popped it up? So people could have like seen that so it wouldn't have been just like they're sitting in the room or whatever where it's like a little more like almost like pulling a key. So like when the key, like it lights up or whatever, or grays out when the key. Oh, that would have been interesting. Yeah, that yeah, could I have been kind of cool. Interactive cool stuff. Yeah, like more, intera more interactive. Like I do think, I think the point is like they could have made it more interactive. Um, yeah. But I think it, I really just think it goes down to like, if nobody knew this would have been such a fun, could you imagine? So Angela's bad acting. Could you imagine her real acting? Like what would she do? She would actually lose her mind if she was a HOH and someone took over her HOH and she had no idea it was coming. Like, I really oh. feel like she would have just fro like, I mean, I don't know what she would have like thrown something. Like she would have just like yeah. lost her mind. So I yeah, feel it didn't work out the way they planned because yeah. they didn't have the shock value because of the Quinn thing. But all right, we're twenty minutes in. Let's get into like so. Then yeah. what ends up happening is we have we have T Core um, and Chemo, Timo, whatever is their friend, their platonic couple name to me. I've seen a couple other ones, but I just am now going to refer to them as Timor. Um, they realize that they could potentially make a really big move. Well, what happens is like Quinn is talking to them about the Pentagon. So he basically yes. talks to them. They don't really know about it, but they kind of know about it. And then they get really, they're like, they literally have this moment in the live feeds where they're like, I'm tired of people telling us what to do, how to live our lives and like not taking responsibility and playing this game. So they're basically yes. like, they're at this point, they're just like, let's take control of the game and make a big move. Um, they and, have like a million conversations right. about it. So that's the thing is that you don't think they're actually going to do it because they keep talking about it and then and not really doing anything about it or maybe going to one person or like not. It doesn't seem like they're trying to gather the numbers at first. So you think like, oh, my God, like, you know what, you guys, even if you're going to have a house divided or have the house, you know, the collective, which you're, you know, kind of part of. It, and there's this like smaller Pentagon, um, you know, and then five points is formed um which uh which is hilarious because you have that clip of angela laying on the floor eavesdropping and then begging to come into five points um so now you have like a bunch of different alliances to play with and then you're wondering like are t -Core and um chemo finally just going to get the balls to like put it out there to other people just to even gauge whether people are going to do it and like to me it was surprisingly like even though the end ends up being a shock people were like surprisingly receptive to it like i thought people would be way too scared but people were like, like i think okay, people yeah, are like, I'm interested. and then going to the camera like oh hell no i yeah. wouldn't do that people were like ready for something i think the people were ready to see the show like to see the game kind of like flipped on its head like i don't think they want to listen to just one player and have one person in charge and i think the fact that t core who has been kind of laying back chemo same thing listening everybody loves them respects them now they have this idea and they're just like yeah let's do it let's go for it well they also realized that they could get the support of tucker because tucker wants yeah. to get quinn and this is a great way to directly hit Quinn yep. and get him. This is a great way to go. Now, Tucker has a thing for Cedric. Obviously, he said, I'm coming for you. Yeah. So they're like, oh, my God, okay, if you're ever going to strike and the two of them are ever going to make their move because they know they can't really trust this, like, super alliance that's really with Quinn um, and they've been left out of other ones or kind of in part of ones. They, they don't know if they can trust Brooklyn, who's supposedly on their side, but they yeah. know. And Rubina's, Tucker, like, best like, friends with them. Yes, and they know they have the strongest player in the house in terms of challenges, wants to screw over the person that they don't trust who made the plan, Quinn. They know that they that Tucker wants to get Cedric out, so there's no other time. Like, that would be insane if they didn't do that. They would yeah. have to, like, go in the Big Brother Hall of Shame if they didn't at least approach Tucker 
And, you know, also it's like, look, his love is up there, Rubina. Like, you know, like we could say if we do plan to, you know, target Tucker, you know, I'm not Tucker Cedric, then like you get saved. Your showmance gets saved. Like this other alliance can form. We can get rid of the power that this um, the pen- collective slash Pentagon have kind of had. People think that Chelsea's not doing enough, that she doesn't really, you know, care. She's not engaged in that. You know, that Cam and Chelsea and that kind of people, they have it a little bit too good. Um, so, and then you have like floaters, you have the best frenemies of MJ and Leah, who you don't know what the hell they're going to do. You don't know if they're best friends. You don't know if they hate each other. Um, and you don't know how MJ is going to do uh, in the arena, but she's a good competitor. But like, they have no reason to have any allegiance to, um, to anyone. Yeah, really? but so I think that they were like, they were scared about Cedric. I know that t and Kimo both have a relationship with Cedric, but I think at the end of the day, they have a stronger relationship with Rubina. So what happens is, and we see them do this big giant blind side, which is, I think, one of the best blind sides that we've seen in Big Brother. I have a clip of our girl Brooklyn's reaction. Hey, good luck, Good luck, good luck. Hey, Miss Sharp, y'all get money. So especially because no one knew it was happening. This is the one time when Julie was like, hey, everybody strategize, go do it. That everyone actually went and did it. And the funniest thing is Cedric is going and talking to Kimo and he's talking to Tikor, being like, you guys, like whatever. He's talking to the total wrong people when Cedric goes to make his plea because they've already done the deal and everyone else is already spreading like it's on. While you have Brooklyn distracting the other wrong person, basically, because Rubina could have been running around campaigning, but instead Brooklyn, because she kind of didn't realize this was actually going to happen, is like holding her face, like basically saying goodbye to Rubina. Like, I love you. You're beautiful. Like, I'm going to miss you so much. So like you hilariously, just by happenstance and just by Julie reminding everyone that they can go campaign, you have Brooklyn almost holding Rubina captive so she can't figure out that she's about to not go home. Yeah. And then you have Cedric going to the total two wrong people who have just totally changed his life and are just letting everyone else get on the same page about it and make sure while, you know, making sure that essentially like the people that don't need to know about it don't know, like making sure that basically in the end that Leah, they know MJ will do it. They're, you know, somebody's running around making sure Leah's going to do it like, are we good? Are we good? Well, Cedric's like telling the two people who just set up his demise, like, hey, can you two keep me? Maybe thinking it's just their two votes he needs, not realizing the whole rest of the house except for like three people. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, Here's the thing, too. Um, to go back to the whole T-Core and chemo thing, I think that it's crazy to me that this house can't stand still for two seconds. Like, you see Tucker trying to put himself on the block. You see, you know, the same with Cedric. You see all these things these people are doing because they feel like, oh, the house is a little stagnant. Like the, the house isn't doing anything right now. We got to keep it fresh. We got to we got to keep this thing moving. Well, it's insane. It's like some just people, let, let this thing happen because some people are doing too much. And then I think the people that were the too much people, though, actually, it didn't work out for Cedric, but it yeah. worked out for Tucker. It worked out for Chemo and um, t to realize that there's people that get antsy and want to make moves. Um, and then the people that were left out are the people that aren't. Like Chelsea and Cam have kind of been chilling and they weren't part of this. So it's like, you're exactly right. But it's like they took advantage. Two people that have been chilling just talking a lot. Chemo and t like, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Totally took advantage of that energy that something always needs to be done and fed it to the right people. And just, I don't know if it's coincidence or they felt it out, but the two people that don't do that, Chelsea doesn't do that. I've never seen Cam running around strategizing or doing that. MJ doesn't even really campaign for herself. Like she's starting to uh, learn how to be a social person, not like a robot and starting to make more, you know, in line things with people. But like they're, it's funny. They don't even need or want the people that aren't chaotic and need stimulation to know about it. So it's like, it's almost like this masterpiece of magic that works out because the people that want to keep doing all the things are included in this. So now they feel like, oh my God, we can do a thing. And you're right. Maybe they wouldn't have been as convinced if they weren't so antsy to always be doing a thing. I think Um, they just like, 
are bored. And I think like this was great. Like T Court and Chemo are so self aware. This was a great moment when they said this. Just like, so it was great. Like, she's like, we did that. Like, first of all, the fact that they got that on camera after the episode, at the end of the episode was like cinematic gold. Like, that is the everything that like, oh, you can't script these oh things. God. Did she say we did that or we did this? We did this. We did that. I think she said, we did that. Um, I can play it again. She said, uh, she said, we did that. We did that. We did that. Yeah. So she's like, and they're so self-aware that they did it. And listen, they're about to go into a endurance comp in like, it's a crazy, it's the wall it's endurance comp. comp. So, so this is comp. like the aftermath. Brooklyn's like, what the hell just happened? All day, it's been split all day. Yeah. So like nobody was agreeing on I, anything. Yeah, up until the very end. Or I would, there, there would zero, you know why. That doesn't make sense for me. So, of all people, you know why that doesn't make sense for me. But we'll talk. I don't know why she says of all people, but like Brooklyn is scrambling, and she's because Brooklyn had joined the five points and wasn't exactly told exactly what was going to happen to the very end. But on the other end, remember, um, Chico in the end mentioned something like something like it's her or we'll get her or she says something ominous people aren't sure who they're talking about i'm pretty sure it's brooklyn she's referring to dude brooklyn's I just a floater i like don't like her i'm over. i mean not like i'm sure she's a great person i don't like her in this game i'm over her in the game she's a floater she's like one of those people that's just trying to do like i don't I'm know confused about why she's confused she doesn't move the game she's forward just lying and playing it up also to the camera because god is good and God is always good and good is God. Sorry, her her exchange with Julie Chen was just hilarious. Um, it was like she was trying to gain points. She, with Julie and also like I think Brooklyn is always playing it up to the camera. She is playing it up to Rubina after the thing. After it goes down, she's like, I wasn't it's ever going to vote you out. I didn't know they told me to do it. I think it's just like one of those things where she's just like, like, this is my reaction of Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. Brooklyn has this alliance where she's not supposed to turn, like where her core alliance is supposed to be, is supposed to be an allegiance. Let's say allegiance instead of saying alliance. It's supposed to be to Chelsea, to Cam, and Cedric of all these people. So that's like an OG, like they have a final thing, they have whatever. Yeah, but she's like she fine to turn on them. Enemy, but then she gets brought into five points, which is like the enemy alliance of that. And is basically knows that the plan might be to get Cedric out. But here's what's interesting. She doesn't go run back and tell the other alliance, which is good. because She's not going to blow it up. But then I almost don't understand how she doesn't have clarity what the, what the final plan is. Unless they didn't trust her. And they were like, yeah, she's part of five points slash whatever they named it. Once Angela tried to join it as like their pseudo thing. But... Like, Brooklyn genuinely seemed to be saying goodbye to Rubina. Yeah, she told Rubina she, she was going was home. Happen. Yeah. Like, exactly. Like, genuinely thought that. So I feel like the house told her what was going to happen. Like, okay, we're thinking about the Cedric thing. And then we're like, let's not tell her it's really going to happen because then she's going to go make sure she goes and tells her other alliance. So... I couldn't tell if she was acting or not, but I was like, you know what? This does track. Like the way that she seems so sincere with Rubina, the way that she did vote for um, for Cedric to stay, that she was one of the only three people. May I feel like she was supposed to be someone they thought was going to flip, and this tells us a lot. Didn't trust that she was going to flip, so they were like, "Fuck her. Let's not tell her in the end what's really going to happen. Let's keep her on the outs." So now she's like, girl, you in danger. Yeah. She Cause she doesn't do anything. She doesn't win any competition. She doesn't move anything along. She's just like doing the, I feel like she's, I don't know. I'm not a big fan right now. Her, Joseph, I mean, I think even Cam, like at least Cam moves the game along a little bit, but like the three of them are really like, I forgot Joseph was on the cast, frankly, because we don't see him. He's not even around. What is he doing? He's a floater. Um, but okay, we have to talk about the Tuesday of it all because I have some great quotes from Instagram and TikTok. They said, 
Tuesday, what a waste of an episode. An entire episode of Angela rehashing her nastiest and paranoia from uh, Sinna's Hasks one. And then um, the other one was from Courtney. You're making us watch a podcast and it's awful. I watch the show. I don't want to watch this. Now, Tuesday's episode. They did not need a recap this early. They, they did not. Recap. Not only did they not need a recap, but like they announced, this was the other problem that people had about it. They announce a twist, the AI investigator, and they don't tell us about what the twist is. We don't know how it's going to work. So they bait us into like watching the recap episode, but then it's like we watch and look oh, we have three returning players three returning players and then it's just yeah for cbs to test their podcast potential right. they're like maybe these three people people could have a podcast let's watch them do a recap i don't think so because they had no chemistry i don't think it was that i don't think it was about them doing a podcast about it or anything i think it was a filler i think they just needed like and i also see this in the chat right now danielle smith said it was a filler they're broke they need the money i do agree i think it's a filler they probably didn't have anything on a tuesday night and they're like let's announce a twist but i do have a question guys what is wrong with cody <laughs> Who, Cody's one job, one job, Cody California, you had was to learn someone's name. And you had the entire four weeks. Who would you form an alliance with? I don't know, Charlie, Cody, what is wrong with you? I do not understand, like, he's not watching. is he yeah. not watching? His friend yeah, Tucker is on it. And he saw he could wing it based on like his um, skill or what other people were saying or just being- But coding. like, all you have to do is go to like 10 minutes before you go on li on live television or pre-recorded television, whatever it is. Like, look at the Big Brother cast and know their names. That is the least you can do. Like, I don't, I don't understand why he doesn't know Chelsea's name is, he calls her Charlie. Then his reads are so bad. He says, who's playing the game most like you? And he says, Angela? Who is playing a similar game to Cody, Angela? That could not be farther from the truth in either one of his seasons. Yeah, and I think it's also the fact that, like, it's crazy to me that production didn't cut that stuff out or at least, like, adjust that before it yeah. was actually out there. Um, also, this whole thing, no one ever likes the recap of the recap. No, right? we hate the recap episode. And everyone hates it. Everyone's like, this is just, we've seen this. And there's nothing new. For the fact that you got, you guys tagged that at the end of the episode, we're going to tell you about the AI instigator. Be ready. Be ready. There's right. Gonna be a big right. Twist. And then push it off till Thursday. Not even the Wednesday episode. The Thursday right. episode. Thursday, which also cuts, which makes this crazy madness. So like when Cedric gets voted out, um, everyone was asking why Julie did this to him. It was obvious because they did not um, announce what the uh, the instigator is going to be. That she was just like, so who do you think voted for you? Yep, it was those three people. Instead of letting yes. him go. Because she needs to give the more, yeah. Thought, yeah, he, she cut his interview short, but also we didn't get valuable insight about like internal things who maybe he had better relationships than we thought or like whatever. Because Julie was like, oh my God, quickly, I have to tell them. Just, okay, yeah, fine, Cedric, cute little boy, good classy guy let's talk about the AI instigator because I got to get this in because it's a live show and it's going to end at right. the time and I was like oh my god like well and poorly planned. yeah and everyone online is saying right now okay they're saying two a few things they're saying one do you think that this was to prime Taylor to do some sort of bigger thing with like whatever the show is um, the other thing they're saying is do you think that this was just because they needed like to catch us up with something for the AI instigator because they want us to vote for Angela. So I feel like, I think people's reaction is thinking like, they obviously had a plan behind this. And some people again are saying like, they just don't, they don't have any money. But I could see that like they needed filler episode. But like, I, I could see- I'm 100% sure yeah. that when they bring people in like that, that they are and they need filler that they are and it's a format they change right. the format. it's a format they are, mm -hmm. they are I, I it doesn't have to be a podcast but they 
are testing to see, okay, you know, Jag has a personality and already does podcasting and does this. Taylor, like, let's just Cody, with, let's just throw these people together. I have a weird feeling that if we did, Cody could have been a last minute replacement. Maybe that's why he didn't know anything. Maybe they had someone more animated. Because even though Cody's a, a winner and stuff like that, he's not a very, like, well, no, the, the streets, the the streets on Reddit and everything are saying they asked the last four winners. So they asked Jag, obviously he was the last one, uh, Taylor, Xavier, and Cody. Uh, Xavier's under contract with NBC Universal. Cody was like, I'm thinking they're they're thinking like this 2020 the all-stars from the last all-stars and this new era of big brother like this newer era or whatever yeah. we have errors in big brother we have errors in all the shows yes. but like i'm guessing because cody was the all-star winner i don't know if it was to test their chemistry they had no chemistry my sister did a poll and was like what is this snooze fest they need someone that is more like animated like taylor's amazing i love her i like jag i like cody whatever but i'm just saying in general like when you have someone coming in to talk about the crazy like whatever's happening on big brother get someone who's gonna talk about it yeah and also like having them sit this is what i do think it was a filler. I think I think they knew they wanted to do a recap and we're going to do a filler because there was nothing that Tuesday yeah. schedule is probably empty. That's probably correct. They were like, let's see how bringing old house gets guests in to talk about stuff instead of just doing like a thing that either Julie or a narrator does or just like works. testing the ratings. It's cheap. Yeah. Test new format. Right. And I do think they're noticing that YouTube and stuff like that is going through the roof. So they were like, well, what personalities could we do if we wanted to do some sort of after show ourselves or recap show ourselves? I think they threw a lot in at once. I think, and I, I've worked with CBS directly. Like I've been an employee of CBS. I've been an employee of NBC. I know how they think. They don't think like Netflix. They don't think like these other people that are very adaptive and on their feet. They will have like a bunch of thoughts at once that are disjointed, but different executives who have different like, I know we need this because this goes well. I think we should do this. But look, I know we need a recap. Somebody else says, I know we need to fill Tuesday night. Somebody else says, well, personalities are all starting to have their own podcasts and their own TV shows and recaps and after shows. Let's throw it all together in a dumb way that doesn't work at all or give us well, any info. Did they prep have. them for questions? Did they prep them to talk about what's going on when they show clips? Was it like, surprise, here's a clip? Or was it like, we're going to talk about, let's talk about Angela's fight. And then it's like, here's some talking points. Because like, even for any podcast, you have talking points, you have notes, you have an outline, you have structure. Like, it's just like, I think Not they, everyone needs that though. If they no, and they don't. In there, if they threw either of us in there and, you know, and just said talk, Bobby too. And I mean, we could just talk. So they have to be careful. Like, Jag can also just talk. Yeah. So like they have to be really careful. I'm not so sure about Taylor. I just I didn't have a good read, but like Cody obviously needed a lot of prep. Didn't watch it. Probably was one of those people that like he could be a very good show us for all I know or something well, like that. But Cody has a podcast know. about Big Brother. So like that's what yeah. my question is. Like why do you not know Chelsea's name? Like you called her Charlie. Like it just doesn't oh make God. like he literally does a podcast the winner's circle with Derek and it just doesn't make any sense to me because I'm just like I'm just so confused about it uh the Tuesday I think they could have just done a lot different with Tuesday episodes like catch up do a catch up if you want to do something like there's just so much more you could have done hometowns like whatever um but I just felt like this felt flat for me too you know what they needed they needed live feeds like they could have done a live feed compilation yeah because there's this stuff that so hasn't been shown the scenes, and the struggle to show yeah. the leap from sunday even the week before to show right. what happened mm -hmm. the week before and the leap from sunday to where you get to thursday was going to be so intense that if they had just taken live feeds from like sunday through whatever that time is tuesday and had somebody quickly edited together even a a live feed feed like live feeds how did we got there like is there a showman? Is there this? Yeah. Did Leah hate Quinn like really quickly. That would have been really cool, and also have promoted their live feeds to get more people to watch them. 
where instead yeah. they just were like I mean for the love of puppies like I literally saw a montage of prank wars that these people have been playing on each other that was like 10 times more funny than this whole Tuesday episode like yeah. the prank like someone put I don't know like mayonnaise in the milk or what was it ranch dressing in the milk like Cedric like mixed up all the cereals like they're doing these fun pranks like let us see them having fun let us see them doing silly things like let us see the live feeds like I love that idea Jen um so all right before we get to spoilers I'll play this um this clip for the uh, ads Coming to Curie's Coca Booth Amphitheater, it's the legendary Roots crew. That's right, the Roots. I love are you all. To Cary, North Carolina. Thank you for Friday, watching us August and hanging out. And they're not alone. Special guest. We're going to talk spoilers. Gray. So get off so now if you don't want spoilers. Hey, you Cancer Fund. So get your tickets now. That's right. Go to etix.com. That's E T I X.com. Or come to the venue box office. It's Coca Booth Amphitheater in Cary, North Carolina. Friday, August 30th, The Roots. See you there. All right, and the night before, you can join uh, Johnny Fairplay and I at the Protagonist Beer in Charlotte, North Carolina. We're going to be doing a live Big Brother viewing party. So if you are in Charlotte, North Carolina, tickets are also on sale now at BigBrotherTix.com. Charlotte, North Carolina, the party VIP opens at 6.30. Party VIP opens at 6.30. Party VIP opens at 6.30. would dominate that game there should just be a game show where we talk for 24 hours straight and see if anybody can talk more than us and be like give us all the money because we would win that there's nobody even like the most annoying talkers obnoxious talkers you and i somehow managed to do it bobby has been trying to say something and has been so politely been like <laughs> all right so i uh well i was told not to uh, talk over anyone so <laughs> that's why you have to uh, you have to look this is fucking war with rachel and i when we're talking we don't mean it we don't care i know i know, you I have know. To talk over us. i know um so okay so one thing i wanted to bring up was the the fact that the week before the eviction episode was super awkward right there were so many things that happened with julie chen and what happened on the program it was awkward. You know, you brought up the whole uh, Brooklyn thing where God is good, you know, good God, whatever it is. This week, I feel like it was ten times more awkward. Yeah. Like, the fact that we saw the Cedric hug last probably, what, 30 seconds? And then all of a sudden, Julie was like, oh, wait, we have more to talk about. It, there were so many little things in this episode tonight that just caught me off guard. Did you guys see all that? Because I felt like it was the most awkward episode I've ever seen in my life. I think it was awkward because they gave extra time to kind of after the AI arena for him to talk to people. Because if you notice, they've been cutting it really short where because nobody's doing anything. Nobody's and it's live TV. Like, yeah. Man. They're like, hey, talk. It's live TV. And nobody was. Yeah. So Julie is also programmed for these things to happen where it's like, if it's a double eviction, they give the double evictions like a good three to five minutes and you know they cut to commercial like to talk and they kept, sorry, they kept talking. So I don't think they planned for that long. No, you're totally right. Cause they've never taken advantage of it before. Yeah. I think they knew they would take some advantage of it right now. But they didn't realize how long it was going to go because then she had to start yelling about them right. to get like it's a live yeah. show. They never it, on a live show. I just don't think that they plan for like things that could happen. They plan for like things that are predictable. So yeah. on a live show, they're more like this is predictable. They've not talked. They've done this. So this is what's going. This this backdoor plan is for sure happening. Well, then it just like 
the you know everything went off at the hinges and it was just like what's gonna go off and like I think Julie didn't know and they probably were in her earpiece hey we've got it two more minutes two more minutes you know yeah like telling her like hey in her ear like don't forget we have to interview Cedric and we have to tell people what this um whatever it's called um is, yeah, like, investigator. The investigator the, what is it the uh, instigator which you can vote <laughs> now investigator. who are you voting you? for what? Who are you going to vote for? Not Tucker. Not Tucker? Everybody saying Tucker. I don't Tucker. want Tucker. No. I don't want I, I was thinking about either Angela, she's the messiest, but Tucker, I think, would be a great choice for this. Or I think T Core would actually do a really good job with the instigator. I want to, yeah, somebody who would plan better to watch other people who are unhinged and can't control themselves react. So look, you don't want it to be Tucker because let's say they do it like, first of all, everyone's saying, well, people are gonna disregard it because they know it's fake. But what if the person is saying things that other people know is true, but no one's telling anyone? Like people know that Leah talks a lot of shit about Quinn, but that Quinn doesn't know. So what if all of a sudden, whoever it is goes in there and is like, by the way, Quinn, Leah hates you. Leah talks about you all the time. And P.S., like MJ and Leah, you guys aren't really friends because Leah spends so much time talking trash about you that it's whatever. But they also put in some lies because if they tell a distinct truth that they know is happening in the house that no one else knows about. Or if they review Which it is why it has to be someone like T Core because she's the only person that has a genuine relationship with everyone who is like T Core has a relationship with these people. Chelsea does too. Chelsea might be good at this, yeah. but I feel like Chelsea's not a good like a liar. Joseph could be good too because Joseph is a floater kind of still and doesn't really exactly know who like who he's gonna ride with in the end. So if he could stir up some shit and make people like go more to one side or away or figure out how people are going to react. That would be good. Um, Leah would be good at it, even though I want her spot to be blown up just because she's such a little shit talker. Um, Bobby, who do you want to vote for? I, I personally think, and I know I'm a little bit of a Quinn stand, but I feel like Quinn having this role would know what to do with it. He would make yeah, it. He might. Painting. I don't want someone boring. And I want someone on the opposite side of the house that's going to stir up shit Maybe also the person that's probably in trouble, like that side of the house is more in trouble than the well, other side right now. That's what I was going to say. Knowing the spoilers, now that we know they did a firewall, it was literally a firewall, could not have been more. This competition live was chef's kiss. I was on the edge of my seat. I am not kidding you. I swear to you, it was midnight my time. I was like, oh my God, what is gonna happen? They're like, it was one of my favorite wall competitions ever. I love the wall. The wall is my favorite competition on Big Brother. Yeah. I wanna play Big Brother just to play the wall because I know one issue though sometimes can be with like where they put the straps, like if I'm just the wrong height because I'm like medium. I'm well, they didn't sure. have straps on this one and they had three different grip grip areas. Or grips, not straps, yeah. grips, sorry. Um, I just was like, um, thinking about how they change the wall and how like the different sizes. And sometimes that has screwed people over where it's like either only the really tall people and the short people have a grip. And I'm like, God, and the medium sized people tend to lose on this. It's usually like the stronger people or like the tinier people you wouldn't expect. And I'm like, Oh, I'm I me, mean, even though I weigh like 105 pounds, like I'm medium. So I'm like, but I want the wall. Like, oh, I want to play on the walls. But when I heard it was the wall, I was like, Oh my God, I'm excited. I need to stay up for this. I need to know what's happening. I like the wall because it shows who wants it because, listen, they're getting sprayed with water. They have paint thrown at them. They had, like, some, like, I think it was, like, dust or, like, a foam or something on top of them. So this is the thing at the end of the day I noticed with this wall was that it didn't seem to be just, like, everyone's always, like, it's for people with little feet. It's for the girls. No. You know why? No. Cam was one of the last people on the wall. And I thought that that was really interesting to me. Everyone in the chat last night um, on the Big Brother Live feed chat was literally saying like, oh, Cam decided to play this week. Cam decided to show up. And I was like, yes, I am here for it. Cam oh, did decide. Straight. Yes. The wall yeah. is endurance. And it's Rubina, straight. like Rubina decided to show up. Like yep. that was amazing. Yep. 
And the fact she that... She stayed on the longest of any woman and even beat out a bunch of the guys. So I was like, look, Rubina almost won. It was like, um, almost like a photographic... It was like a photo finish trick. Just, MJ just had like longer arms. That's the only reason she won that veto. B, 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 I, B, B, I keep wanting to screw up the BBAI arena. Rubina had her balls on the thing. Well, Rubina That's paused and looked at MJ in that. She like, yeah, she, she did that to herself. Did, also, MJ, like you see her arm. Yeah. They did, um, there's like a bunch of free shots. Like a bunch of people have it going on, like a s- screenshot of um, Rubina reaching for it. And you see MJ's arm is like on it. And you're like, oh my God, like MJ's wingspan is like three Rubinas too. So Yeah. Well, so now we see that Tucker is the HOH. It comes down to Quinn and Tucker, which is like just so perfect for this week, especially after last week. It's just like everything you could have wanted. Quinn is not happy. Quinn last night was really upset on the feeds. He wasn't really going off on the feeds or anything, but like you could just tell like from his looks, he was upset. He's worried. Like he's not feeling confident. He knows he's going to go up. I would like to see, I'll be completely honest. I think if Quinn and Tucker could work together this week and change it up, I would like to see that. Like, I think... Sorry, there's actually an option for that. Yeah. So, Tucker, being Tucker, decides he's going to throw a curveball and try to, you know, shake it up because he can't sit still. I swear the guy's ADHD. He can't sit still for two minutes. But he offered Quinn an ultimatum where he's going to put him up and if he... Like, he told him, I'm going to use the veto on you Come if I win the veto or if someone wins the veto and takes you down, we will take you down as long as this information does not get leaked. So it's a breadcrumb, a little bit of a breadcrumb for Quinn to keep his mouth shut. And uh, we saw Tucker talking on the live feeds to Angela about this. As long as he does not spread that information, Tucker's going to be the wild card and take him off the block because he wants to continue this rivalry going forward. I miss that. That's amazing and good to know. So it's like good intuition from you, Rachel, and really good yeah. info from you, Bobby, because I didn't hear that, and that could, that's potentially game-changing. It's game-changing. Tucker's going to keep his, keep his word. It wasn't just saying it to keep Quinn from blowing it up. That's pretty amazing. Um, I know they're the last two left in the wall, like on opposite sides in this dramatic fashion, but what I missed is didn't one of them offer a deal to the other one and then the live feeds cut? I missed that. No, the live feeds cut, nobody was talking and the live feeds cut as they do right before, right when Cam fell, it was like they basically cut the feed. So nobody knew what happened. Like we don't know. We just have, we're hearing what happened from the aftermath so from watching the live feeds we nobody saw that like i watched the whole thing and as soon as cam fell it was like i want to say two minutes like what does everyone watching think it was like two minutes as soon as cam fell when it was just tucker and quinn then they cut and they went and we don't know what happened until it was puppies and then they're in the shower and we start putting the pieces together throughout the night So if Quinn, I'm thinking Quinn does keep his mouth shut for this, but I'm thinking that Quinn, I guarantee you that he, um, I think he goes against him the next week. So I think he turns on him. I think he works with him this week and then turns on him the next week. I just don't see Quinn working with Tucker long-term. Um, and yes, we're still, we still have three nominees. Um, Allison and Rich did a, uh, they're the producers, executive producers did a, a interview. They said they're keeping the three nominees. They like it. Um, I think it's great. I think it's, ama- it's amazing. It's great for the, it's great for moving the game. It is like Rich Meehan said, it's like a live sporting event and he's a hundred percent right. It. it is. Love it. Yeah. I'm glad they confirmed it too, because that's all anyone's been talking about. Right. Like, is the BBA arena staying? Are three noms staying? Yeah. It's like, yes, fine. Now we know. Yeah. Um, I have to Everybody myself. online loves the three nominees I'm too. I'm myself and going potty. Be right back. <laughs> they said if three if three of us go up, we think we're going to see Brooklyn, Cam, and Quinn. Uh, Quinn is the pawn. I mean, I would see I I would see that happening. Um, although I don't know if Tucker will go after Cam. I definitely see Brooklyn. I'm not sure about Cam. I would think it might be Brooklyn, Leah, and Quinn. 
Um, only because Leah works with Quinn. Leah also is like, she's not working with Rubina and Tucker. And I don't think that Tucker likes Leah. So I really could see Tucker putting Leah up. So Brooklyn, Leah, and Quinn could be my yes. options. Uh, and I think that uh, both those are very, very good options. It's definitely going to yeah. be Brooklyn and Quinn. And then right. with Quinn being the pawn and who's going to be that third person, I even think there's an outside chance Chelsea could go up. It just depends. I could see um, Chelsea it be in danger, but I don't think she'll go up as a first. I, I think it's a, the lesser of all three, but yeah. I definitely think it's a possibility, especially when the veto gets used. If it gets used on Quinn, I think Chelsea will be the renowned candidate. Yeah. Um, and then also, as far as the three competitions, sorry, my daughter's just came in here. <laughs> as far as the three uh, house guests going up for nomination and then the competition on Thursday night, the AI competition, I think it's great. One, we were worried about the fact that there's no back doors anymore. But I think the best thing that's come out of it is give someone a chance. It gives all three people a chance to save themselves. Baby, get down, please. It gives them all three yeah. a chance to save themselves. And then two, it allows there to be good dramatic TV. We don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. going into the Thursday night episode. It could go one of three yeah. different ways. You never know. And the best part, in my opinion, is it brings the drama to the episode after the fact. We saw that happen last night. We got to see where they actually get to talk to each other and everything's going crazy. That's what the producers wanted, and that's what we're getting. I think they need to keep this going forward for yeah. every season. They this should a hundred percent. Times that I've ever seen, and I haven't. I, you know, I'm not a big live feed person, but I have watched the after. Tried to watch aftermath ones. They don't usually do that. They usually cut them pretty quickly. This is the like longest I think I've ever. That's the one I always cared about since I was a casual watcher. I was like, oh my god, who's mad? What's their reaction after someone? goes home after a house guest is evicted and usually they don't show us that right away and this time they like went they just let the live feeds go and that was amazing because you get to see like the aftermath of it and the chaos from it so that's amazing and then the other thing that's great about it is you can't count on anything so any plan you make gets extra riskier with this twist of the BBA arena because you don't know who's going to win. You can make some assumptions that like Tucker is going to be good but look how well Rubina did in this one like you, you don't know. So yeah. it's like you, it, it makes you, the backdooring stuff was you had to have a lot of planning and a certain amount of certainty. But there's a, there was almost a formula for that at this point. That destroys that old formula, kind of takes this into like a new era where like you can make all the plans you want, but in the end, you're going to be like, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if your plan's going to backfire. And then you have an, oh crap, even heightened dramatic moment of this like you quickly can talk or figure something out because now we know who we can't vote out and who's safe like you never had that before you have yeah. like, a lot more time to make your plan go right and now you do not have any certainty well and i think plan. as a player like three chances you're out like if you don't win hoh you don't win veto you don't win ai like, sorry, you had three shots, plus you have an entire week to work with people. So like, I wonder how this will work in a double eviction because in a double eviction, they can't do an AI arena. They're gonna do a HOH, a veto, and then they won't have a chance to do because the episode is just not long for a double eviction. So if they have a double eviction, I wonder how it's gonna play out. But I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how, the rest of the season, since they want to keep this twist up, they love the AI arena. I love the AI arena. We all love watching it, how it plays out for the rest of the season, how this week plays out with Tucker as the HOH. If Tucker gets his way, he wins veto. He gets takes Quinn off. Does Quinn win veto and take himself off and tell Tucker to go F his life up because he tried to offer him something, have a giant house meeting and it all blows up in his face. Like that could also like be an outcome that we see because if Quinn wins veto, then Quinn says like, you tried to get me to do what you want. And like, you're not going to tell me what to do. I saved myself. So I think it's like, it could be a really interesting week. I see uh, like a Leah or someone like Brooklyn going home this week, which is the thank you. See you later, Brooklyn. But uh, <laughs> well, thing is weird though, because 
Yeah. Sorry, I heard you guys were they're talking about the potential nominees. A lot. There's a lot more like chatter about like Chelsea definitely being one because they want to completely get rid of that alliance, and she's like a core part of it. And and she was like a Cedric stand. And I can't, they were like, okay, Cam and uh, Chelsea would make sense to put up together because then you'd really be taking out that alliance. Brooklyn is interesting to me because she stayed loyal to them, but she also started this five points thing. So Tucker really needs to figure out where he stands with Brooklyn in order to like, that's why I'm not sure. Brooklyn was just in that, that that thing just happened. Yeah, she's just a flip flopper. She's a flip flopper, as Gina Marie said. A flip flopper. But it depends on how smart and how disciplined just like, Tucker can be. Yeah, and it depends it's on just, her if she is able to go. She to was Tucker. just lucky. No, she. Got, I don't think Tucker even buys it from Brooklyn. Tucker never had a relationship with Brooklyn, so Brooklyn doesn't like have anything to hold over his head. Brooklyn's not friends with Rubina. Brooklyn, Rubina's not going to fight for Brooklyn. Is she, is she important to get out because nobody really likes her? Or trusts Nobody. Her. She's not important to get out. But this is the thing. This week, if Tucker uses the veto on Quinn then someone not important to get out goes home. If Quinn uses the veto on himself and blows up at Tucker, again, someone not important to get, some floater hopefully goes home this week. And that's the kind of the best week you wanna see because now we have very distinct sides of the houses. We have very distinct like people that are kind of like the leaders of it. I think it could be a really fun week. Um, we'll see what happens when Tucker makes his nominations today. So Tucker's obviously not going to put up cheap work because that's now his little five points alliance. And she essentially Tucker's kind of taking credit for it. Like I did it. And then, but really, you know, t well, and um, Tucker's and been Kimo friends with t though. Anyway, so he, Tucker, I know. Kimo, so Tucker, I'm a, I'm a Rubina. Person in the house. I want to win veto. Um, and I wish like, it's almost like, t is such an obvious potential win for this whole thing. It feels like Tucker's in a good position. It feels like tonight when he said Cedric, he was like, that was so bizarre. Yeah, he's just somebody, like... I expected somebody was going to cry, but when Joseph was like, Cedric, and yeah. then like buried his hand into his weird mustache, I was like, is that fake? Is Joseph pretending to cry? And I was like, wait, he might really be crying. I'm like, what is happening? I expected... No, I think it's like cry. fake... So, okay, I know we've done like a full hour, so we'll go on, we'll move on to The Bachelor. And first things first, I have to show you this, the cutest clip ever. So they announced the new cast of The Golden Bachelorette.